You tried upgrading your PC from Windows 10 to Windows 11, only to find out your computer is not compatible with Windows 11. Well, join the club. An estimated 240 million PCs worldwide can't be upgraded. I've got two PCs that I still use that I can't upgrade to Windows 11. Now here's what I'm going to do about it, and you can too. Why is this even a problem? On October 14th, 2025, computers running Windows 10 will stop receiving free security updates, putting those PCs at risk for cyber attacks and other problems. Microsoft will be offering updates for one additional year if you pay $30 or jump through some other hoops that they've set up. But I know that extra year will be over before I know it and my computers will once again be at risk. So I would just rather find a permanent solution now. You can check your computer's eligibility for Windows 11 by running Microsoft's free PC health check software. You can get a link for that in the description below. Now to the PCs I'm still using failed PC health check, meaning they're not eligible for Windows 11. Unfortunately, Microsoft implemented some fairly strict hardware requirements for Windows 11, making older computers impossible to use with the new operating system. I need to replace these old computers, but I don't want to spend a fortune. Is this low-cost mini PC capable of replacing your old computer? Well, let's find out. This is the Geekcom IT12 2025 edition mini PC running a 12th gen Intel Core i7 1280p CPU and Intel Iris Xe graphics. For full disclosure, this computer was provided at no cost for this video. However, no fees were paid and the video was not reviewed by Geekcom prior to posting this video. So just how good could this little PC be? Well, let's be honest, these little computers look like they could barely run a calculator, much less do intense graphic-y stuff like video editing or playing games. But your mom probably told you not to judge a book by its cover, right? So let's immediately look at the cover, specifically all of the ports. On this side, we have the power button, and then next to that is the 3.5 millimeter headphone or speaker jack. Next are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Both of those provide up to 10 gigabits per second data transfer. And this port is also a PD port for faster and higher power charging. On the opposite side, we have the power inlet, and next to that are two USB 4 type C ports right here and here. These provide up to 40 gigabits per second of data transfer and both support DisplayPort 8K video. Next are two HDMI 2.0 ports right here and here. So this little bitty computer can support up to four monitors and I will test that later. In the middle is a 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port. Then we have another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and finally a USB 2.0 port for a total of six USB ports. If you need more ports, you could always use a USB hub like one of these to add even more ports. On this side, we have very convenient SD card slot. And finally, on this side is a Kensington lock slot. Now the outer case is made of a very durable plastic. It's scratch resistant. Honestly, I had a hard time determining if this was plastic or metal. One possible advantage to having this outer plastic shell is that the Wi-Fi would work better since there's not a metal case impeding the Wi-Fi signal. This unit does support Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth. Inside this is a metal frame to keep the components very safe. Regarding airflow, notice that on two sides of this case here, there are air intake grills and then on the back is an exhaust port and there is a fan inside. Now this mini PC weighs in at one pound, 4.8 ounces or 590 grams. And I can tell you that the construction really feels solid, but none of this window dressing matters if this thing can't perform. What I need to determine is, can this replace my old Windows 10 desktop computer so I can continue doing the various tasks that I need to do? Well, let's plug this thing in and find out. I'll plug in the power supply. There is a small brick here. I need to plug that in. And I'll connect a, an HDMI cable from this monitor. And then I'll plug in a keyboard and a mouse. 
Now the monitor, keyboard, and mouse are not included with the computer. I'll also plug in an Ethernet cable so I can download the latest updates to Windows before I start doing anything. Now starting up for the first time, you'll just need to set up Windows for your location. This does come with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, and of course it includes a license so you don't have to worry about any licensing issues. Okay, I have everything set up, including downloading the latest Windows updates. As is typical with a new computer, that process took about two and a half hours. Now, I don't want to bore you with a bunch of meaningless numbers and stats. I think too many reviews like this emphasize the technical numbers, which I think most people don't care about or even understand, but those reviews skip real-world usage. Therefore, I will be doing real-world testing and sharing that here with you. This is my ridiculously large computer, one of the two that can't be upgraded to Windows 11. And this is what I'm trying to replace. Now, I built this back in 2013, and at the time it was a pretty good computer. I built it to edit video, so it had to be fairly powerful, although back then I was not editing 4K video, but it could easily handle full HD video. Now, computers that are too old for Windows 11 are almost certainly slow, so that it will not require a very powerful computer to replace it. And that's great news because that means a comparable computer that can do what your old computer can do will not be very expensive. Remember Moore's Law? That's the rule of thumb that says computer processors typically double in speed and capability every two years. Let's compare the CPU in this old computer with the CPU in this new computer using the website cpubenchmark.net. And you can see here I've entered the CPU from this dinosaur it's the Intel Core i7-3770K, and I'm comparing it to the CPU in this mini PC, which is the Intel Core i7-1280P. Now, if you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of comparisons here, but the simplest one to compare these two is the CPU mark. The CPU mark number is a rating of the CPU's performance, and you can see that this new computer has a C score of 20,304, while my old CPU has a score of 6480. Now, based on these results, this new CPU is about three times faster than this old CPU. Now, the bottom line for you is that you can get a much more powerful computer for a lot less money today compared to when you probably bought your old Windows 10 computer. I spent over $1,500 for the parts to build this computer back in 2013. Contrast that with this new mini PC. At the time of making this video, it's going for somewhere around $500 to $529. Now, if you compare that with a new desktop computer with the similar specs to this mini PC, you would spend somewhere in the neighborhood of two to $300 more. But none of these numbers really matter if this computer can't perform in the real world. So let's test it. Browsing the web on Google Chrome went without any problems. I opened 50 plus browser tabs. I watched some videos on my YouTube channel. These are 4K videos and they played just fine. I played content on Amazon Prime Video, content on Netflix. The videos all played without any hitches. Next, I loaded up Microsoft Word and opened a very large file with over 1,400 pages. It had pictures and tables and texts, and it still worked just fine, very smooth. I loaded a 541-page Google Doc, and this was also very smooth and easy to work with. Next, I opened a huge Excel file with a 1,000 by 1,000 spreadsheet. So that's 1 million calculated cells, and it worked perfectly when I updated a cell that causes the whole spreadsheet to recalculate. Next, I uploaded and opened the same spreadsheet in Google Sheets, and then updated the cell that causes the whole sheet to recalculate. This recalculation took around seven minutes. Google Sheets is doing its calculation inside your browser, I believe using JavaScript, so it's not nearly as efficient and fast as a native application like Excel. For a quick comparison, I did the same recalculation in Google Sheets on my old computer. It took 26 and a half minutes, which was almost four times as long as the new Geekcom mini PC, so this seemed to agree with the test results on CPU benchmark. 
Word to the wise, use Excel for complicated spreadsheets. Next, I did some editing in Photoshop. Now I'm no Photoshop wizard, but I put it through its paces and it ran quickly and easily. Next, I installed DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing program. I loaded up an old video project, which had a bunch of footage and edits, and I was able to easily step through and make additional edits. And note that this was 4K video, not the smaller HD video I used to edit on my old computer. I rendered the video, which is the final step to outputting a finished video, and that took just over 45 minutes. For comparison, I rendered the same video on my old computer that I am replacing. The older computer did beat the new computer on this test, rendering the video in just 15 minutes, 30 seconds. But remember, this new computer is not using a beefy, dedicated graphics card like I have in my old desktop computer. Finally, I loaded up a couple of games and tested the gameplay at various resolutions. Doom Eternal was playable at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 with video at between 24 to 30 frames per second. However, when I changed the resolution to 3840 by 2160 or 4K, the FPS plummeted to roughly 7 to 12 frames per second. I loaded up Sirius Sam 4 and found that at 1920 by 1080, the frames per second varied between 27 to the low 50s. I bumped the resolution up to 3840 by 2160 and surprisingly got similar frames per second. So the game you are playing will obviously make a big difference in playability in frames per second. Earlier, I promised to try this PC with multiple monitors, so I've connected the four monitors you see here. Again, there are two HDMI ports on the computer. Those ports will support up to 4K monitors, and then there are two USB 4 ports that will support up to 8K resolution monitors. Now, I have a mixture of monitors connected here. This is the only 4K monitor, and it is connected to one of the HDMI ports with this white cable here. And this is a full HD monitor, also connected with an HDMI cable. And then these two are full HD, and they receive their video signal and power over a single USB-C cable for each monitor. That uses the two USB 4 ports on the back here. Now, all the monitors are currently set as an extended display, so you see something different on each one. And as you can see here, as I move my mouse pointer, my excessively large mouse pointer, you can see as it moves from one monitor to the next. This is definitely uh, an extended display. Now, you could also set these up to show the same thing on one or more monitor if you needed that for some reason. I did notice in my testing, the fan in the computer did cycle on and off more often when I was running the multiple monitors versus just a single monitor. And that's to be expected. The GPU and the CPU are both having to process more data and to send the video signal to the multiple monitors and it's using more power. So it does need to cool the computer more often, but it was not excessively loud. If you need a lot of monitors to track the stock market or perhaps track some security cameras or just like to multitask, then this definitely will work for you. You may be wondering if packaging all this capability into such a small case would create a heating problem. I touched on this a minute ago talking about the fan noise. Throughout my testing, I monitored temperatures using HW Info and never saw any overheating problems, even when playing games or rendering video. Temps were always within an acceptable range. This system uses Geekcom's proprietary Ice Blast 2.0 cooling system that uses copper piping, and a large quiet fan for efficient cooling. Even at high load, the fan inside this unit produced very low noise. I checked it with my decibel meter and it maxed out at just 51 decibels, which is comparable to a slow rain. With the computer off, room noise where I was testing is in the 38 decibel range. Are there any downsides to a mini PC like this? As you just saw, this mini PC can run graphically intensive programs, but you may have to make some compromises on speed and or video resolution. Unlike a desktop computer, this mini PC can't be upgraded with a more powerful graphics card. You get what they give you. 
Now, another downside is that there's obviously limited space for installing drives. However, this computer does support three internal drives. To take a look at that, I'll turn this over and loosen the four feet on the bottom so we can open the cover. And I'll carefully lift this out because I believe there's a cable that connects to this bottom plate that's connected to the motherboard. And there you can see that ribbon cable that's connected here. Inside, you can see the version I am testing came with a one terabyte NVMe drive right here. This slot will support drives up to two terabytes if you need more storage space. And then here, there's also uh, an additional space for a second M.2 that's a 2242 slot. So it's a smaller slot than this one, but uh, that will support a drive up to one terabyte. And you can install a third drive here in this bottom panel. This is a SATA connector connected here to this motherboard, and that will support drives up to two terabytes. And so that would be a drive like this. This is a solid state drive, or you maybe have an old drive out of an old laptop, a spinning drive, and that would go here in this spot, again, up to two terabytes. So altogether, these three slots will support drives up to five terabytes, a total of five terabytes internally. And you could easily add multiple external drives through USB ports and even access network attached drives through the ethernet port. Now, I don't see storage as a big limitation with this computer unless you need to install very large drives. Now, while we're looking inside, I'll just point out the two slots here for the RAM, these two right here. This model came with two 16 gigabyte sticks for a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR4 at 32 megahertz. RAM is upgradable to 64 gigabytes, which for most people is actually overkill. My old PC has just 32 gigabytes, which was always plenty for my needs. The size limitation of this case for most people should not be a problem. Today, very few hardware add-ons need to be installed inside a large case. Most things you might want to add to a computer can now be connected through high-speed USB ports. The Windows 10 end-of-life apocalypse is coming, but it does not have to be a major ordeal. In most cases, I believe you can replace your old machines with a new compact PC running Windows 11 like this one for less than you paid years ago for that old computer. I have to admit I was skeptical that such a small computer could be a viable tool, but after many, many hours of testing, my honest opinion is that this is a quality computer that is powerful and capable. Going forward, I plan to use these mini PCs to replace some of my older, larger desktops. I really love the fact that they are just so much smaller and will save a ton of space. I mean, look at the difference here. The bottom line for this real world comparison is that everything I would want or need to do on this old Windows 10 computer, I could easily do on this mini PC from Geekcom. Graphically intensive activities like video rendering or high resolution gameplay were the only areas where I found any real compromise, but it was still quite usable for those purposes. For an average computer user, this mini PC should meet your needs in spite of its low price. Plus, it's backed by a three-year warranty should any problems develop. At the time of making this video, this unit's going for around $500, but Geekcom has a variety of these mini PCs that can fit just about any budget or computing needs. You can find my affiliate link to this unit in the description below, plus a special discount coupon code for my viewers. Be sure to grab that if you're going to pick one of these up. Now, comment below if you have a computer that is not eligible for Windows 11 and what you plan to do about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.